and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. We did have quarter end take place today and lots of other action last week that I will be sharing with you. We're going to take a look at the current markets and then be on drill down, take a look at some of the sector rotation that's really shaping up quite nicely. Also take a look at some of the top headline news that drove price action. And from there, those sub industry groupings that are seemingly coming to life here. So lots to cover. Let's go ahead and start with those headline news. We did get in the broader markets, a follow through day on the S&P 500. That's certainly the biggest news. That is a system where the broader markets exhibit certain characteristics that identify a bottom. So we're going to look at that. Also, the NASDAQ did enter a bull phase. That's defined as a 20% or more increase in the percent change from the most recent bottom. So Certainly positive backdrop there. Also, we did receive news that uh, pending home sales, they were they rose again for the third month in a row. However, as it relates to economic data that was positive for the broader markets, first up, we did see that the fourth quarter GDP number was revised lower. And this is what the Federal Reserve is on the lookout for. They want to see a softening in the economy. And that was certainly one metric. We also did see consumer spending and consumer sentiment retreat. That's also positive in the sense that, again, the Fed on the prowl for a contraction in the economy and consumer spending has been driving that inflation. Also, core PCE, this is a very closely watched number by the Federal Reserve, a true gauge for them as it relates to inflation. And it did show a softening in February. So at the end of the day, most of the economic data this week is generally heading in positive territory as it relates to what the Fed is on the lookout for, and in net-net, a softening overall in the broader economy. Next week, we will have a shortened period. Next Friday, the markets are closed. However, going into that, we will get the employment numbers for the month of March, and that is a very critical metric. So that is going to be one of the most closely watched data points. There, of course, is other economic data due, so, but you will want to keep an eye out for that. So let's go ahead from here and take a look at those broader markets. And here we are. This is a daily price chart of the S&P 500, and it's marked up quite nicely here because a couple of metrics that I do want you to be aware of. I talked about the S&P 500 exhibiting those characteristics needed to signal a near-term bottom in the markets. And of note is the fact that the S&P closed on the day back here on Wednesday, more than 1.2% above the uh, it increased it increased by more than 1.2% on volume that was higher than the prior day so hence the S&P 500 has marked a near term bottom we do still have a little bit more in the way of possible upside resistance and that is that 4100 level that is widely cited so if we can break back above that of course we would see increased confidence, certainly on my part, for the broader markets. The RSI up here in positive territory and trending higher, and the stochastics up here above 50 and also trending higher. Of note as well as the fact that we are closed now above this key 50-day simple moving average. So net-net, good news here on the S&P 500. Let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ and we can see the NASDAQ remains in a very clear cut uptrend. The good news also today is that it closed above this 1200 level. This is a longer term key area of possible upside resistance. So good news there. I talked about that 20% advance from the lows here in March. So on good standing with the NASDAQ RSI above 50 and trending higher. And likewise with the stochastics. So 
at the end, we are generally in bullish positive territory within the broader markets. We do still have hurdles by way of inflation and other data that may present to themselves as a roadblock, but at the end of the day, bullish behavior in the broader markets. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at those 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500, a two-month daily price chart view, and it's sorted by that relative strength. We want to be aware of where that relative outperformance is materializing here in the broader markets, all about you taking advantage of that, of course, but then also gauging investor sentiment by just really experiencing and seeing where that uh, strength is. So up here at the forefront, I'm going to update this again, a little bit in the way of surprisingness, because the consumer staples is up here at the forefront, and it did underperform for the week. It was up 2% relative to the broader markets up almost three or more. And we can see, however, it is in a nice uptrend. But from my work, I'm going to key in on these higher growth areas that are going to really deliver stocks that are, by their nature, growth names outperform in a bullish market. So first up here is technology and XLK has been up in the forefront for many weeks now. It has led certainly that NASDAQ uptrend that we've experienced and it continues to be a leader. This week it was up on par with the broader markets. And then XLC has really come into its own. This is the communication services sector. I'm going to pull up a weekly here very quickly, and you can see how it has underperformed for quite some time. It was one of the first groups to deteriorate prior to tech. And here more recently, again, has on this weekly, the MACD now just getting into positive territory. The two biggest holders among XLC is Netflix and Amazon. And both those names really outperform this week. That is a boost. But there are other areas in the service communication services area that are also beginning to come into play. Next up here is consumer discretionary, and this is a new movement of this particular industry or sector coming up to that top upper area where it is showing relative outperformance, all about a 5% plus increase in these consumer names. We're going to get into that because there are a couple of factors. Of course, you do want to be aware. Um, actually, I misspoke on communication services I believe I said Alphabet and uh, Netflix are the biggest holders or the heaviest weighting. Now here in consumer discretionary, it is Amazon that is a heavy weight, as is Tesla. And those two names have really gone on to outperform quite a bit this week. But there are other areas of strength in the discretionary area. And what we are experiencing here with this group and many others is these downtrend reversals. So I will share with you names that are shaping up quite nicely as it relates to not only those charts, but really informing me of how we are seeing money flows into certain areas with the follow through day and the uptrend that we're seeing in the markets. So from here, let's go ahead and drill down a little bit further. I do want to point out some areas that did get hit hard, certainly in the face of the banking uh, crises that we experienced. And this is industrials all about the fear of global recession, pushing a number of these industrial areas down further. What we are experiencing here with XLI, the industrial uh, sector, is what we're seeing in individual names as well. And that is a double bottom formation and then a nice uptrend out of that. So uh, looking quite interesting here. And then another area that did get hit cyclical, very much economically sensitive is uh, basic materials really fell out of bed. But again, that double bottom, you want to see a higher low and then a nice uptrend materializing. So that is good news as we see these areas beginning to move from the weaker areas up into the forefront. Let's take a quick look at energy. It was a top performer this week, another double bottom formation. However, the chart is still below with XLE, this 50-day simple moving average. I'll share with you an area that has been rallying there. 
in energy and why. But also, I would say from my work, not quite ready for prime time. Financials still struggling here. I talked last week about the concept of when you may want to consider getting into some of these bank stocks. But net net, there is still not a lot in the way of vibrancy among financials. It did outperform a little bit this week. But the banking area, not so much, those regional banks. So let's go ahead and get into that regional banks and other sub industry groupings here with the, again this two month daily price chart view using ETFs that are really quite powerful as far as helping get you in front of what is shaping up as it relates to outperforming with an eye toward a continuation of that outperformance. So here we are up at the forefront, NASDAQ up here, and take a look. The two groups that are on either side have really come into their own of late. They were the first to reverse and are continuing higher. First up here is IGV. This is a widely used and watched ETF for the software group, and you can see it had a huge advance today into a nice two-month base breakout. So we're going to take a look at a couple of names there because the software group has over 350 names in that group. And from there, you want to be aware of themes that are working. And this is a lot of what my work is about, not only uncovering strength among or within a sector and a group, most importantly, how you can then drill down beyond that and get in front of some of these stronger names. Let's take a look at semiconductors, not quite as vibrant this week, but still in a nice confirmed uptrend. Also double uh, experiencing a secondary base breakout here and trending higher. So you want to be aware of that. That has been a vibrant area in the markets. Certainly, it did withstand the downtrend that we've seen in a number of those more uh, economically sensitive areas. From here, we can take a look at some downtrend reversals that are shaping up. And this is IHI, the Medical Devices ETF. For a lot of investors, healthcare is generally viewed as defensive, and that makes sense. But medical devices are going to be your higher growth areas in healthcare. So we can see this nice move IHI above that 50-day simple moving average, your MACD now in positive territory, and your RSI above 50 and trending higher. So now from here, of course, you do want to be aware of some of the areas that are still experiencing uh, weakness, and that would be IWM, we did see small cap stocks outperform other areas, still work to do. This is IWM, the Russell 2000. You can see we're just now dipping into positive territory here with that RSI, not so with the MACD yet. Uh, however, it did experience the most in the way of deterioration, keeping an eye on those small cap names, and then also biotechs. However, we are seeing at the very least a bit of an upward trend. We do have positive momentum up here with that RSI. And this is an area that I certainly keep a close eye on because a move into these biotech stocks really is indicative of a risk on appetite by or among investors. It underperformed this week, but certainly heading in the right direction. And also one last area I did want to highlight that's not ready for prime time, but it was a big, uh, relatively big outperformer. And that is the Dow Jones Transportation Index. And certainly today it experienced a nice 2% rally. We have that nice MACD crossover, RSI now in positive territory. And certainly when you see a move into these transports, it is really signaling investor confidence, certainly as it relates to the economy and the broader markets. Some of the stronger areas here were rail stocks really beaten down, also beaten down uh, airline stocks as well. So from here, let's go ahead. And I do want to share with you some of those well-known names. I talked about uh, industrials moving, basic materials, and so forth. So first up here, we're going to take a look at Caterpillar. And Caterpillar is a company that, of course, is not only well-known, but it is globally facing and all about 
improved economic outlook. We can see big numbers, gaps up, a nice rally here. But it did really suffer, again, quite a, a bit when we had that banking crisis, that concept that it could spread, that we could see a global recession. But let's take a look at the chart now on Caterpillar. We have that nice double bottom, higher low. We're not quite out of the woods yet. That RSI not quite yet in positive territory. That MACD crossover just developing here. But ideally, as if you are inclined to look at larger cap names in this space that are potentially reversing, you will want to see that RSI get up there. Also, that MACD get up in positive territory. Here's another stock that is among, I would call it a peer. They are not exactly the same as what, to, what they offer. But certainly, when you are looking at names, big uh, industrial type stocks, Deer is a company that will come to mind. And it is is further advanced in its downtrend reversal. We can see that RSI now is in positive territory. We have that nice MACD crossover. But most importantly, it has broken back above that 50-day simple moving average, nice high volume shaping up there. So that is certainly of note. A couple of other names that we can take a quick look at. I'll share one other, or actually a couple of names in the industrial space to give you a better sense of what is shaping up. Again, very typical, that decline here with that SVB and other other banks getting into trouble. But here we are with a very nice downtrend reversal break with Rockwell Automation, ROK, break back above these simple moving averages with that RSI now in positive territory. And then that nice MACD crossover indicating that this downtrend has reversed. So from here, one other name in that same space as Rockwell, this is Boeing also did not get hit quite as hard, but we are seeing positive uh, activity taking shape here, move above those moving averages and positive RSI and MACD. One other name in that space, again, indicative of what is shaping up is Illinois Toolworks ITW. So I'm really highlighting these bigger names that are experiencing and ITW held in really quite well, but now in a nice uptrend, on its way to potentially having a base breakout here at 250, there are a number of smaller names. And this is the kind of thing that I will get into quite a bit more in detail as it relates to my MEM Edge report that comes out on Sunday. And then my midweek report on Wednesday as well. We dig in quite a bit further than what I'm sharing with you now. But more to the point in today's show is to give you that broader sense. So from here, let's take a look at a couple of bank stocks that are trying to reverse. And you'll see a clear cut difference relative to those industrials. And I'll get into some materials as well. Uh, but here we are with Bank of America. And Bank of America, for those of you that are not aware, they were cited as getting a bulk of the withdrawn money from SVB. Uh, Bank of America did see a lot in the way of inflows in deposits. Good news. However, it's not translating on into this chart. We can see that it has rallied this week. It is up above this uh, shorter term green 10 day simple moving average. And we are seeing that nice MACD crossover black line up through the red indicating at the very least the downtrend has reversed. But let's take a look at some other metrics here. Bank of America deeply oversold given that sharp free fall here. And it is seeing an RSI trending upward, but we will want to get that RSI above 50 and get that MACD up here a bit higher. And it in essence, not as attractive as a, for instance, go back, take a quick look here at Deer, and you'll see just a whole, uh, just a very different view, same double bottom, but now above that key resistance. Let's take a look at another large bank stock here. This is Morgan Stanley. Same dynamics, attempting to reverse that downtrend. We are seeing sprouts or we are seeing the uh, beginning stages of a turnaround with that black line up through the red. Not quite out of the woods yet. So I did want to also, I failed to share with you KRE. This is the regional banking ETF. And it you can see the momentum here is just not there, despite being deeply oversold. We're not getting liftoff. 
the uh, KRE, the regional banking ETF, end it flat for the week. So not ready for prime time yet. And that's really more a follow-up to what we were reviewing last week. So from here, other areas that I do want to share with you is some, I talked about XLY. Let's just take a quick look here at that industry group. And then from here, I do want to share with you a little bit of vibrancy that we are seeing in some of the uh, retail areas. So here we are with that downtrend reversal, talked about the mega cap names, but there are some other areas in retail. This is XRT, which had really been one of the first in the beginning of February, deep deterioration, but we are seeing a nice rally this week. And a lot of that is earnings driven. Take a look at Lululemon. They came out with their numbers very much ahead of estimates, gapped up, was able to retain that big gap up in price. So we are seeing vibrancy. Another, this is a smaller shoe company uh, based in Europe, but in the prior week, they had that gap up, super strong earnings, and then a nice continuation rally there. So from here, I'm going to share with you a couple of names in that XLY consumer discretionary space that is our experiencing in the beginning stages of a downtrend reversal, Las Vegas Sands, LVS. We can see that RSI up there now in positive territory and that MACD just beginning to turn positive. Another well-known company in the consumer space, good old Starbucks, SBUX. Again, still early, not quite. Let's see, we did close above that 50, so we could be in pretty good standing here with a potential downtrend reversal in that name, but really trying to give you a sense of what to be on the lookout for among these beaten down areas that are beginning to see vibrancy. This is DraftKings. They had a nice upgrade take shape this week, and that was this move here that then pushed DKNG up above the shorter term moving averages, your RSI in positive territory, nice black line up through the red on that MACD in positive territory. So of note there. And from here, we can take a look at another area that has been faring well. We did touch base upon this last week, but this week we did get that nice positive news on the home builders and uh, home sales. And this is Lenar, L-E-N, one of the many home building stocks that are in a nice uptrend here. And this today in particular, after a period of back and fill, we are potentially on track to see a nice flat base, break, base breakout with Lenar, another bigger name as well in the home builders. You really can drill down among any of these retailers, but NVR has been one of the relative outperformers. And historically, you want to be in those relative outperformers because oftentimes they will continue to lead a particular group higher. And last up here, I talked about XLI. I'm going to share with you just two names here. Bigger cap. Here we are with UPS, United Parcel. We can see this nice base breakout that took place this week. And this is on the heels of Federal Express it giving us or reporting their earnings back here mid March gap up, and it has been able to retain that gap up, which is what you want to see in order to give you a sense that there could be a nice continuation rally out of that. And last up here, I am going to go ahead and take us back to a daily chart of that software industry group. And I talked about the strength in that group among technology and take a look. It had a big move today, nice high volume, and your outside momentum in positive territory. So when you are looking at that big basket of 350 stocks, you will want to be aware of themes. And by that, I mean areas among software that are outperforming primarily due to growth. And the reason there is because major corporations facing a potential recession and also keeping their eye on that bottom line are not going to be spending as freely everywhere in software, but there is 
a couple of areas that are quite vibrant. Here is CDAY, Ceridian HCM. We can see that nice downtrend reversal that we've been looking at here. Nice uh, characteristics on that RSI, MACD crossover. And this particular company is does provide cloud software for human resources and back office. One other name in this group as well in software is WDAY. That is Workday, and it is in the same space as far as providing help to that HR, streamlining employees, uh, their metrics as it relates to productivity and otherwise, and also help with payroll. So that is an area where corporations are continuing to either upgrade their software or spend WDAY base breakout earlier this week and a big continuation rally there. One other area in software that we can take a quick look at is software security. And these are stocks that help pre prevent the, uh, sp um, my gosh, spam, but certainly prevent outside individuals from coming into your network and keeping your system and your software secure. This is Palo Alto, P-A-N-W, nice, tight flag formation breakout that took place today. And one other name in that software security space is a foreign company, N-I-C-E, and we can see it's had this nice elevated move here, high volume that pushed that MACD into positive territory. And likewise, with that RSI also trending upward, and we had a nice base breakout here. And that's it for this week, everyone. I want to thank you for stopping by, and you can look for me again here next week. Mm -hmm.